Hey, how you doing? Welcome back. If you've got a WooCommerce store on your WordPress site, you'll know how important variations can be. You might have a t-shirt and you want to sell small, medium, large, or give the customer an option to pick black, white, yellow, green, blue, whatever, okay? Creating that is really, really simple. We've got videos on that, go and watch. Now, a video coming out at the same time as today is about how can we do some filtering on our WooCommerce store to make it more user-friendly and a better experience. Now, one of the best ways to do this is to ensure that you're using your attributes because it's going to work with a plugin we're going to be using in a separate video. But what you want to be thinking about is attributes, like I said. Now, for some of you, you may go, well, yeah, I know about attributes. You go into a product. These are all fake products. Do not buy anything from this shop. When you go down to your product and you turn this into a variable product, you would go to attributes. You would create an attribute or you could add one and you would create variations of that for your pricing. That's pretty clear and easy, correct? But what if you want to, rather than doing it for the product on the fly here, what if you create an attribute and you reuse it over and over and over again within your products? Let me explain what I mean by that. By the way, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, share and follow us so you can keep up to date with Elementor and WordPress to help you, your clients, and of course, your businesses. So if we look at products on in WordPress dashboard on the right hand side or the left hand side, even you've got all products, add new categories, tags and attributes. Now, categories and tags, you're pretty much used to. But attributes, you probably haven't clicked on here. You've probably done attributes individually within each product. You keep adding it in, don't you? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. If you go to attributes, this is really the best place to do it centrally and it will become massively important when we start to using in a filtering system in the other video I mentioned. So we're going to create an attribute and we're going to call this attribute size. OK, and I'm just going to click add attribute. Pretty simple. There we go. But what we haven't done is given it any terms. So let's configure the terms. They're going to be what is selectable, what can be picked or chosen. Let's go in and let's type small and we'll add that. Small is now added to that attribute. Let's now add in a uh, medium, mid, medium, 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 and we'll click add. And we'll also do large as well. And we could have done various other sizes, extra small, extra, extra small, extra, super large, whatever you want to go for. OK, but we'll just go with those for now. Let's now go back over to our attributes. So what we have is size with the main, like the class, the group. And within that, the terms are large, medium, small. Let's add in another attribute, OK? So let's just go in and add in a color. And we're going to click select or add attribute, OK? And I'm not going to do loads and loads and loads here. I'm just going to do configure terms. And for now, I'm just going to do black and white, OK? In fact, now we'll do red and we'll do blue. And that's added. And we'll now do blue as well, OK? And add that. So if we now go back to attributes, we should see color blue and red. Right. Cool. Good. Now, if we go back to our products, OK, and we will go to the YouTube one again, it's a fake product. We go to edit. When you scroll down, OK, you will notice now that it's not present here as a field you can pick. Because that is what you call an advanced custom field. There's a separate plugin for that. But what I'm looking at is what can I use here as an attribute that I can then use later on for filtering on my WooCommerce shop? I keep mentioning that. It's important. Believe me. If I now go down to attributes and I go to custom product attribute, I now have color and size because I've created them. OK, I've, I've thought about it and I've created my attribute list. I can now go to color. OK. I can now maybe hit save attribute and I could now, sorry, please do remember to turn this into a variable product before you do this. Go to attribute. So I've picked color. I've now added it and it's now saying, is this going to be used for variations? What does that mean? It means that when if you've um, when the person's looking at the product on the single product page, if you've said color is now an attribute and it's going to be used for variations, they might have an option to buy um, blue or red and the red might be $20 and the blue might be $50 because it's a different type of product. Remember, attributes don't have to just be size and color. It could be make, model, um, processing power of a computer, 
um, uh, type of iPhone, Android phone, whatever you want really, um, subscription, membership levels, all of these variations. So have a think about your products, okay? Try and think about when you go to a website and you're buying something, what do you use to filter down to get to exactly what you want, okay? Or what helps you decide on what you want? You're not gonna say to someone, hey, buy a computer. No, they might want to know about the, the memory, the RAM, the processing power, um, how many USB ports, HDMI ports, um, is it a Mac, is it a PC, all the op uh, operating system, all of these things you got to think about, okay? Do not leave it to the last second and then start to try and have to go back through all of your products. Do your homework at the start and get it in. I'm going to put blue and I'm going to pick red. So I'm basically saying when I originally created the attribute, I picked blue and red. I could have done black, white, yellow, green, purple, whatever. But for this particular product, you're only allowed to have blue and red. Let me let me just go reverse a bit. Let's explain that again, all right? So you make sure you pick variable product. You got your attribute, okay? Uh, you pick your attribute, you add it, you say this is gonna be used for a variation, and then whatever was available in that attribute, you add it in. So if there is only gonna be blue, you might say there is only a blue option to take away the red. If there is a red option, you add in the red. If there's a black option, you add in the black. But you've already added in your standard for what the range is within your attributes, okay? So you kind of covered yourself. You've made it easier for yourself because you now just pick what you want. Very helpful if you have someone else who's looking after the WordPress site or a client and you want to be very sure about what they're doing, okay? So I'm just going to click save attributes, all right? And obviously when you've done that, you can go to variation. And if you want to now, you might say, right, create variation from all the attributes. And it will create a section for blue and a section for red. Change the image, change the stock inventory, change the different price. But the main reason I wanted to show you this is because of another video coming up, which is about how do we get this to improve the filtering of our products. Hey, I hope you like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon in the next video.